Hello and welcome to my little revision video on Caroline Duffy's War Photographer. So just like normal, I'm going to ask for all this poem. I'm going to tell us what it's about and the reader's reaction to the messages of it, which would be key for our introduction. And then I'm going to go through the technique, structure, word, alliteration and rhythm and rhyme, which is where the bulk of my marks are going to come from in my English Literature AQA Paper 2. So, war photographers are essentially people that go to the conflict and they're taking photos and taking pictures of what they see. Now, back during the Vietnam War, these war photographers became quite notorious because it was the first time that people in the public had seen what war was like and seen the brutality and the horror of conflict. It shocked them and it pulled them and it created a huge public wave of distaste for the Vietnam War effort to the point where the Americans had to pull out. Caroline Duffy in her poem here is exploring how we've become almost immune to this conflict now, how people at home are no longer as interested and no longer feel as powerfully about the images that they are seeing. So in Caroline Duffy's poem, a war photographer has just returned back from conflict and is processing the pictures and his thoughts from the war. However, Duffy is examining the juxtaposition between the home and the comfort of our home that we take for granted and the horror and the brutality of the pictures that he is processing. And as a result of this great divide, the photographer now feels alone and he feels that no one can understand the suffering anymore. Now this brings up a few different areas of power and conflict. First of all, it shows the lack of power of a photo or a person that they have to convey the horror of war, but it also shows the power of the memory of war, that this man is clearly disturbed and upset by what he's seen. He doesn't feel like he's got anyone to turn to to help him with that. Duffy also examines the conflict between war and home, the brutality of war and the comfort of home, but she also examines the conflict in our need for war. For at home it's seen as an entertainment or a little moment of sadness, However, in these theatres of war, it really is a matter of life and death. Her key message is here that in the safety of our home, we neither understand or care about people suffering in conflict. However, she also shows that once you've seen conflict, it scars you forever. So, first of all, in terms of techniques, we've got this first technique here, this metaphor that all flesh is grass. So this first of all is emphasising the scale of death, for the death is as common as grass, and grass, as we know, is everywhere. But she's also showing the fragility of life or people's flesh, for it, life is taken and is easily destroyed as grass, which we know is very gentle and very easy to break. However, she's also showing that despite this, the, the amount of death and how easy it is for people to die, that these deaths are meaningless to people at home. It's just as common as grass, it's just as meaningless as grass. We go to work and we don't give a damn about the grass on the side, the same way we don't give a damn about people dying anymore. She's also got this very interesting and powerful juxtaposition at the end with the tears between the bath and the pre-lunch beers, where she's juxtaposing our sadness, our tears, with our home comforts of baths and beers. This shows how incapable we are of understanding and empathising with those that are suffering conflict because of our lucky, comfortable life that we lead. Therefore, our tears are just meaningless and they're just a brief pause between our daily relaxation and pleasure. Now, this poem is a narrative in that it's telling a story. It's telling a story of how he's processing his thoughts just as orderly and just as mechanically as he is processing the pictures. This creates a sense of detachment between the photographer and the actions captured. And we can look at that in a couple of different ways. First of all, is it now that he's home he can't understand them or doesn't want to understand these pictures? Or is it that he is now returned to a society that sees war as something entertaining and something only to be intermittent just in bits and, bits and pieces so he can't let himself be touched by emotion because that's just not what you do in our comfortable, happy society? Now, you've got to imagine that this is a war photographer who is processing his pictures by red light to make sure they are coming out and this is referred to in Caroline Duffy's first stanza, where she talks about the only light is red. Now this adjective connotes violence and danger of the war he's seen, but it also connotes a womb-like safety of warmth and comfort that he can now enjoy. However, red also connotes anger, showing his frustration that people cannot and will not understand the horror of war. It's such an easy word to remember red, and there's so many connotations of it that I'm sure you can go quite far in your analysis of what that tells you about Duffy's message. We've also got quite a nice lexical set here of church, priest, mass, all linking to religion. So for me, this echoes the lack of dignity in these people's deaths. Him processing the pictures of their death is the closest they have to a service. But it also echoes the care he is taking. He respects them, even if others do not. 
Furthermore, the peace and the righteousness we associate with church juxtaposed with the conflicts and evil we see in these pictures, his safety is so far from the sights that he has seen. We've got a nice piece of alliteration at the start, spools of suffering. Now this sibilance is long unpleasant sound which emphasises how dark and unpleasant the content of these pictures are. But it's also quite a slow sound, spools of suffering, reflecting the time and care that he has taken over the process. The key word I'd pick up on here is spools, because spools are the photo negative, so they'll never be seen. People don't want to make conflict part of their lives, so there's so many of these pictures that will not make the light of day and even though you will not see. But spools also come in great numbers. You don't just get one picture on a spool, but there are many pictures, which echoes the scale of the suffering, juxtaposing with society's tiny interest in the pain. Finally, in terms of rhythm and rhyme, we've got rhyming couplets interdispersed with non-rhyming lines. So we've got rose and glows and mass and grass, which rhyme, but then alone and he doesn't. Now this regular structure represents the order he is giving to the chaos in his photos, perhaps also the almost mechanical process he is going through, putting that distance between himself and the content. Now the fact they're rhyming couplets, they go quite fast, but then the non-rhyming lines are quite slow. So he's going through the process quite fast and slow, quite fast and slow, which reflects how he slips into moments of emotion, but then snaps back out of them. This is further emphasised through his sejuras, where he's got rural England, he's got a little Shazura moment where he's got Shazuras on either side of that line. But also the last line of the first stanza is also really heavily for the Shazuras. Now these pauses in the lines reflect a pause in the process. Perhaps he's dealing with the emotions that come with it. Um, or he has to, well, in key, he has to deal with these on his own as no one else understands. Now that last, that one I've, I've highlighted, rural England, the Shazuras there reflect the distance between England, his home, his comfort and the war zone he's just come from.